divine inspiration. In a devilish location. Brigham Young had received a revelation that this was the place. It was just desert. They were tough people. They had to be. And the will to build where no one else would dare. So is that possible to do here in the middle of nowhere? It's not going to work. It's not going to work. How a group of true believers built an unbelievable structure. It's jaw-dropping. The Mormon Tabernacle. I'm Stuart Varney, and this is American Built. When you build something in a major city, you can take advantage of the latest technologies and the finest materials. But building a great tabernacle in a remote desert is another story. That takes imagination, improvisation, and a community of volunteers dedicated to an improbable cause. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was founded in New York and spent its first decades on the move. And the idea is that we're going to keep moving west until we can find a place where we can practice our religion. Mormon pioneers fled to Ohio, Missouri, then Illinois. They moved around, many of them, two and three times from one place to another. Every place they stopped, they built a new town from scratch. As they are moving, church leaders and the church architects are learning how to build. And more importantly, they learn how to build together. They practiced that a number of times, so by the time they got here, I think they probably had a pretty good handle on it. You know, been there, done that kind of thing after a while. Despite years of persecution and flight, the mainstream Morbin community thrived under the visionary leadership of Brigham Young. Brigham Young really was the right man for the job at that time, partly because of his background in building. Brigham Young, by training, was a builder. So he's coming to Utah prepared to lead these people to build this place, quite literally from the earth. Salt Lake City, Utah. They are hoping when they build here, it's going to be permanent. But the Great Basin was no pioneer's first choice. It's just desert. The Salt Lake Valley was the last place on the planet that a lot of these people thought they wanted to be. And uh, they came here and they said, what do we get ourselves into? There is nothing here. There is no train. There is no seaport. They were tough people. They had to be. The first Mormons to arrive built a meeting place out of tree boughs. They called it a bowery. Bowery's were just a bunch of branches piled on top of a, a wooden uh, framework. It was really rough. It was meant to be temporary, but it just to give them shelter, some place to get out of the elements, to have meetings. If the wind is blowing too hard, you're canceling church. If it is snowing, you're canceling church. So Brigham Young built a more permanent tabernacle. The old tabernacle was important because it was a sort of a test case for the present tabernacle. And it had a peaked roof, but they experimented with a plaster ceiling that was curved uh, like a barrel vault. The pulpit was on the long side of the building, but if you were on the end, it was hard to hear. Acoustics were everything to these people. Because the church believes in prophets, believes in a revelation, you need to be able to hear what he says. So Young moved his pulpit to the end of the hall and built a rounded wall behind it. The reason for moving the pulpit from the long side to the end was to help the sound get out. And they discovered that that really made a big difference. But the Mormon community was exploding and the old tabernacle was just too small. They had already outgrown it by the, almost by the time that it was built. Young wanted to build a public tabernacle that would sit beside the great temple he was building right next door. So the temple is for members of the church, and the tabernacle is for the entire community. And in that tabernacle, Young wanted to make sure there wasn't a bad seat in the house. He also wanted clear sight lines. He didn't want any pillars supporting the ceiling that would block people's uh, uh, view of the, the pulpit. So he wants a building without columns. To get the clear span he would need, 
Young looked to the train sheds of London. Paddington Station, King's Cross Station, they used trussed arches to span great interior distances. So the only way to get a span as large as the train yards in Europe is to make it out of metal. And the challenge is there is no metal in Utah. Young would have to build his trusses with lumber. So he turned to engineer Henry Grow. Henry Grow is a bridge builder. Henry Grow had come to Utah and built a, a bridge across the Jordan River. The Jordan River flowed through the heart of the Salt Lake Valley. Grow supported his 130-foot bridge with a lattice truss system. And the lattice trusses is defined mostly just by the members working in both directions in opposite slopes. So you have a bottom cord and a top cord. And then in between it, you have these lattices. Just with uh, intersecting beams that are uh, attached to each other just with wooden pegs. Brigham Young had this idea, hey, we can use this uh, system to build a freestanding roof that does, has no supports. But the trusses on the Jordan River Bridge were straight, and Young had grown fond of the curved walls of his tabernacle. Legend has it, his inspiration came in the morning. So Brigham Young is at breakfast one morning, eating an egg, and has this idea that if we build our tabernacle like an egg, it will structurally stand up, but it will get us the sound that we want. So he takes that idea to Henry Grow and says, Henry Grow, build me an egg out of wood how big can you make this? And he said, well, we can make it 150 feet wide and we can make it as long as you want. Groh designed a tabernacle to sit on 44 stone piers. Each pier would support an arch lattice truss made of wood. On the ends, rounded half arches would create an egg shape. At 150 feet wide and 250 feet long, the Salt Lake Tabernacle would be the largest hall in the world unsupported by columns, if they could find materials to build it. Young would send out scouts to all different parts of the state to find out where certain raw materials could be found. They were in the middle of nowhere back then. The available wood was less than ideal. Pine is not great for building just because it's a very soft wood. This is not great pine. This is not East Coast pine. The local stone was worse. You don't want to use dynamite on sandstone because it would fracture the stone so much that it would destroy the stone. So the only way to get the stone out of the hill was with hand chisels. Not only did they cut the stone by hand, they had to haul it for miles to the site. So the first step in all of this material is they have to build a road. The work was incredibly hard, but the stakes were incredibly high. Every day you are going to be building something for heaven, knowing that your life is going to be harder right now because of it. The timber was all cut locally and the stone was quarried and shipped down here and they, they did something amazing with it. But wood and stone were not enough to build Brigham Young's massive tabernacle. He needed iron and that was a big problem. But there's no metal in Utah. So they get a little ingenious again.